Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. She spent her life in the movies. By 1956, Elvis Presley became the subject of adoration of many young Hollywood starlets such as Natalie Wood, Judy Tyler, Shelley Fabares, and Connie Stevens. The legendary actress and the king of rock and roll dated for a brief period in 1956, but they had an abrupt end of their romance. Why Natalie Wood and Elvis Presley's relationship never worked out. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. America watched Natalie Wood grow up on the silver screen. Discovered by a director when she was still a toddler, she had the talent and it factor that helped her go from being adored as a child actress to lauded as one of the top stars during the golden age of Hollywood. It was a love match anchored in the history of old Hollywood. A child star turned teen idol. She had grown up on film screens in front of millions of Americans and at age 18 had made the transition to serious adult actress. You can still see her childhood in Miracle on 34th Street and her adolescence in Rebel Without a Cause. Her coming of age, still playing in Splendour in the Grass and West Side Story and countless other timeless movies. From the moment Natalie Wood made her cinematic debut in 1946 in Tomorrow is Forever to her untimely death in 1981, the decades of her life are punctuated by movies that even today reside in the hearts and imagination of the American people. Natalie Wood was a beautiful woman, an award-winning actress and by all accounts a lively spirited woman whom everyone enjoyed being around. So it's no surprise that her dating and marriage history boasts some of the biggest stars of the 1950s and 60s. Her love life kept fans enthralled over the course of two decades. With a personal life rivaling the story of any Hollywood movie, Wood was one of the most beloved actresses of her time. By the age of 25 she had been nominated for three Academy Awards for Best Actress. But perhaps because of her tragic end, when you hear the name Natalie Wood today, you don't think first of her storied career. To wit, there are 38 million Google results for the search term Natalie Wood Death. While the circumstances surrounding her death remain murky and controversial, we can agree that in dying so young and so mysteriously, Wood's talent was denied a proper legacy. But her seemingly dazzling life in the limelight was, in actuality, filled with quite a lot of tragedy. In the background of her public rise to fame, Wood survived some of the worst situations life could throw at someone. She was born Natalia Nikolaevna Zakarenko to Russian immigrant parents in San Francisco and grew up in poverty amid a complex family situation. While Wood was adored by her parents, both had their vices. Her father Nick worked hard to provide for his family, but the struggles of trying to survive during and after the Great Depression, as well as anti-immigrant discrimination, contributed to his alcoholism. When sober, Nick was the tender parent but his bouts of drunkenness were marked with violence, suspected to have stemmed from his experience of seeing his grandfather buried alive during the revolution. Wood's mother, Maria, had her own issues. A spirited yet morally grey woman, Maria was often the one who provoked Nick's rampages, and while she loved her children, the Russian refugee was described as a pathological liar by her youngest daughter, Lana. One could never be 100% sure that what came out of the dramatic, superstitious Maria's mouth was the truth. In a sense, Wood's mother was a bit of an actress herself, reinventing herself as she saw fit and playing new roles in the film of her life. It was likely this fixation with the make-believe, in addition to a fortune teller predicting that her second child would be known throughout the world, which led Maria to specifically obsess over Natalie. While Natalie Wood was renowned for her talent and star quality from a very young age, it's hard to know whether the actress would have entered the entertainment field herself if she'd never been groomed for the cameras by her mother. Wood and her mother had a difficult relationship. Since she missed the chance to become a performer herself, Maria feverishly pushed her daughters into the entertainment industry. As a child, Wood was genuinely talented at acting, 
but she was also impressionable and eager to please her mother. Wood was 16 when she auditioned for the 42-year-old director of the film, Nicholas Ray. Ray and the underage Wood then became involved in a sexual liaison. But even with that illegal affair, it seemed that Wood was still not promised the part of Judy. For Wood, 16, who'd been in 20 films since she was five, getting the part of Judy would be her chance to transition to adult roles. The problem was that every actress from Debbie Reynolds to Jane Mansfield was being considered. In a later interview, Wood described how she tried to convince Ray to give her the role after she got involved in a car crash. When Ray came to see Wood at the hospital, the doctor called Wood a goddamn juvenile delinquent. She yelled, Did you hear what he called me, Nick? He called me a goddamn juvenile delinquent. Now do I get the part? Over the course of the 50s, the studios, already in the early stages of freefall following a constellation of regulatory and cultural changes, began to increasingly rely on teen audiences. Natalie Wood worked during an era in Hollywood when studios had full ownership over actors' careers. Actresses like Wood, who was trapped under this system since she was a child, rarely had control over the roles that they took on. To attract teen audiences, the studios and fan magazines and the rest of the gossip industry needed teen idols. She was a studio's dream. Young, popular and unlike Brando and other up-and-comers, already under studio contract. Wood cemented her reputation as one of Hollywood's most likeable and sought-after stars with appearances in two high-profile films. She quickly grew into a professional, memorising not only her lines, but also everyone else's. Dubbed One Take Natalie, she had been a top star for decades, both a box office draw and Oscar-nominated actress. Among her films were some of the biggest and most influential of the 1950s and 60s. But behind the scenes, her love life was rocky. She had romances with Hollywood's most powerful men, including Elvis Presley. They were two of the hottest stars in the world in 1956. Elvis was already a major recording artist and was about to launch a film career with his debut in Love Me Tender. Natalie had already received her first Oscar nomination the year before for Rebel Without a Cause, alongside James Dean. Although the King was already developing a reputation for being a lady killer, it was the teenage girl who pursued him and set up their first date. Ten years after leaving his hometown as a boy, Elvis had returned as a huge star and gave two concerts, wearing the blue shirt for the afternoon show and the red one in the evening. Natalie had Hollywood costume seamstress make them and both shirts bore labels marked the Warner Brothers Studio Wardrobe Department label, Natalie's name and the date that they were made, September 1st, 1956. Intrigued by 21-year-old Elvis's music and image, Natalie, then 18, had asked her Rebel Without a Cause co-star Dennis Hopper to introduce them. She was charmed by their first dates. She told the San Francisco News, I saw his picture in the paper before he got very popular and I liked his eyes. I thought then I just had to go out with him. He's really great and the most totally real boy I've ever met. He's a real pixie and has a wonderful little boy quality. He's very courteous and polite and so sweet. He's the nicest boy I know. A wonderful dancer and he sings all the time to me. All the girls in the country are in love with him. So why should I be any different? Elvis, meanwhile, was starstruck by Natalie. She was in Miracle on 34th Street when he was a little boy. The singer invited her home to impress his parents, but his mother Gladys soured on the actress quickly. Natalie wore a very flimsy nightgown around the house. On November 1st, Elvis flew home to Memphis after filming the Ed Sullivan TV show in New York. Natalie was smitten with Elvis and flew across the country to meet his family when their affair started to become serious. Elvis dazzled the teenager by buying out an entire cinema on a date, something he would continue to do for the rest of his life. Apart from his apparent singing and dancing for her, the King shared one of his other great loves and took her riding on his new Harley Davidson motorbike. As a traffic light turned green, Elvis Presley gunned the engine of his Harley Davidson causing his passenger, Natalie Wood, 
to hold her headscarf more tightly. In the evening, they were pictured together at a glamorous party at the Hotel Chiska. One publication ran a shot of the smiling pair, saying it is almost certain to fracture the hearts of countless teenage American girls. At the height of the singer's early stardom, he'd brought his famous new girlfriend home to Memphis. But it didn't work out the way either expected. Unfortunately, one woman stood in their way. They were to be gone almost a week, but just two days into the great adventure, Natalie called. Gladys has wrecked everything, Natalie said, referring to Elvis's domineering jealous mother. I don't have a chance. Get me out of this and fast. It was agreed that mother could call Natalie back and ask her to come home because of some family emergency. Natalie's romance with the King of Rock fizzled out. God, it was awful. He can sing, but he can't do much else. Natalie described how Elvis, who had a notoriously close relationship with Gladys, would sit on his mother's lap. They were very affectionate and it bothered Natalie. Natalie found Elvis's close relationship with Gladys troubling. His mother said something like, Come and sit on Mama's lap. It was all over, and the next time Natalie was asked by the press if things were serious with Elvis, she said, Not right now. Their brief romance ended with no regrets. Later he called her Mad Nat, I think for how angry she got. Natalie also put the trip behind her. There were people that she idolised. Elvis was not one of them. Their paths almost crossed a few years later when Elvis was offered the lead role of Tony in West Side Story. Apparently his manager, Colonel Parker, was not happy about a story based on street gangs and so the star politely declined. Years later, Natalie's co-star, Rita Marino, revealed her own affair with Elvis in Rita Marino, a memoir. My delight in dating Elvis hinged entirely on one fact. I knew that no one could possibly make Marlon Brando more jealous. The actress had discovered women's underwear at her then-boyfriend's house and engineered public dates with Elvis to get her revenge. Brando apparently threw three chairs. Marino said in 2011, I wanted to get even, so I went from one kind of king to another. I dated Elvis, who was absolutely gorgeous and had a perfect kind of face, but was not interesting. It lasted for three days. Years later, Elvis passed away in 1977 from a heart attack at age 42, and the iconic actress passed away mysteriously in 1981 during a weekend boat trip to Santa Catalina Island on her husband's yacht. The cause of death is still listed as drowning and other undetermined factors. The two lived very passionate and exciting lives and loved even harder. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Natalie Wood? She was one of Hollywood golden stars and a legend both on and off the silver screen.